What did I tell you they should take yesterday? I told you to take Michael Parsons. I mean, he's a bigger Devin White. It. Now, that's what he was in college. Now, we saw Devin White trans transfer, translate from LSU. He might be even better in the NFL than he was in LSU, and he was something special at LSU. But this kid is bigger, six foot three, 246 pounds, ran sub 4'4", was a Buckus Award winner in his sophomore season. Now, he opted out last year, but he can get after the quarterback. He's sideline to sideline. He can get back in coverage. He, I believe he's a special talent. I believe he's better than both Jalen Smith and, and uh, Vander, Vander Esch. Mm -hmm. Their play has dipped. Vander Esch can't stay healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, whatever it is, Skip. He's a big kid, but he can't stay healthy. Yep. Jalen Smith, that injury, although it's a great story for him to overcome, Skip, yep. he's just, he doesn't have the explosiveness yep. that he once had. This kid is the real deal. Now, yeah, I'm sure they would have loved to have a corner, but that's what that's what happens, Skip. If you don't move up, you're like, well, okay, I'm sitting right here. And then off the board goes, boom, right in front of you. Eight, nine, you get two corners. You get J.C. Horn, you get uh, uh, Pat Sertan the second. And now, but I believe sometimes, Skip, the best decision is the one you don't make. And this kid, Skip, this kid can be special. Now, if... And I told you, I said, Skip, you know, he got some red flags off the field, but that seemed like he's Jerry type of guy. Because mm. you know Jerry liked them bad boys. Jerry liked them guys. You're talking about the hazing incident yeah. he was involved in at Penn State. Penn State. He says he's innocent as sort of allegedly accused. Right. Yeah. So I like the pick, Skip. Yeah. This kid can be special. I know they probably wanted a cornerback, but I don't think they'll be disappointed yep. with this kid. He, 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 he's, a, he's a special talent. And it's skip. Think about it, by moving back, and which is rare. I don't. I don't remember. Remember team. Maybe this is a new thing that's coming. Teams that's in the same division trading with each. I ain't helping you. I wish I might help you, and you go take somebody that could possibly beat my eyes in. Why would I do that, Skip? I was shocked we did business <laughs> with the hated Philadelphia Eagles. How dare you, Jerry Jones? But, but still, it worked out. But Skip, you know this. Because he walked away with an extra third-round pick, and we will see this evening how that how gets played. utilized. Asante Samuel Jr. is still on the board. His dad played, Skip. Yep. Tyson Campbell from Georgia and Elijah Molden. So there's still some corners on the board if – but I know you wanted you wanted Pastor or Tad the second. But I don't believe you're going to be disappointed with this kid. I hope you're right. It tore my guts out when your Denver Broncos, speaking <laughs> of, stole Patrick Sertan the second right out from under us. And I just tweeted, "Please, Denver, don't take Patrick Sertan," and they did it. <laughs> And I knew they would do it. <laughs> and yet, was my team sitting on J.C. Horn? It may have been. Right. I don't know that for a fact. I just know I was sitting on Patrick Sertan. Shannon, obviously, it is a glaring need. Yes. And Patrick Sertan, to me, I watched him a lot. He is the essence, the epitome of a perennial Pro Bowl cornerback. Mm -hmm. I could not draw him up any better than to have a father who was a Pro Bowl cornerback. Mm -hmm. And when they hugged last night, I got tears in my eyes because that was some culmination. Mm -hmm. They hugged and they had tears mm -hmm. in their eyes because father taught son and son arrived last mm -hmm. night as the ninth overall pick. And he's, he plays the position the way it was meant to be played. Mm -hmm. He plays the pass and the run equally yeah. strongly. He is long and strong. And you need to be that in that defense that Dan Quinn's going to run. The, the, the corner's got to tackle. Richard gotta Sherman tackle. is a good tackle. Gotta Brandon tackle. Brown, gotta Browner tackle. was a great tackler. He was made for this. Yes. And he was the perfect bookend to his ex-Alabama teammate, Trevon Diggs, because he is solid, secure. He's going to make the correct play every time while Trevon is going to gamble and clue and right. maybe swing and miss occasionally. He may pick one off and he may get burned. So to me, I'm sitting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then as soon as that, that didn't happen, I said, I won't be surprised if Jerry trades back. I had no idea he would trade back with Philadelphia. <laughs> And he gave them the Heisman Trophy winner. Yep. But they assured him, we are going offense. I'm sure he didn't say, who do you who are you going right, to pick? Right. But as long as it was not defense, then Jerry was fine to do what the What did they deal. put take Michael Parsons? Well, I, <laughs> listen, you would have heard about it last night from Jerry Jones. But sometimes there's honor among thieves, exactly. right? You, you me, have to have hey, some honor. I'm trading you. I'm giving you something to value. You can't tell. Skip, if you give me a if you give, pay me money, you can't tell me what I can buy with it. Oh. You would have traded the pig. Jerry would have gone off on them. Jerry after. Would he, he, he would have lost his mind. He would have lost his mind. But they assured him. Yeah. And I think Howie Roseman is honorable enough, and obviously Jeffrey Lurie. They, they just said, 
hey, we're just going to go offense. And I, it was pretty clear that Devontae's still sitting there. Dougie P, Dougie P and Orlando Scandi yeah. might disagree with <laughs> you about how he rose. No, I know. I, I got it. But, I mean, uh, honorable in this context, <laughs> yeah, yes, right, yeah. team to team yeah. that you could trust him yeah. on draft night. Yeah, because okay. if you do that, I, you're I got you. You're, you're right. not going to be able to trade with anybody you're, again. Because that, never, get out. <laughs> that would do you in. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I immediately tweeted, because we talked about him, that Micah Parsons was a pretty great – Consolation prize, yes. a plan B, however yes. you want to look at it. And I'm hoping you are right about him because he has a rare burst <laughs> for a big man. And I watched him a lot two years ago at Penn State when number 11 just leaps off yeah. the screen. But trust me, he he's more instinctive than diagnostic. You know, yeah. he he's not reading and reacting. Right. He's just reacting. Yeah. And they just let him fly yes. all over the football field. And yet Jerry was adamant last night. They are projecting him as a pass rusher. So, again, you think, well, Sean Lee walked into the sunset right. because he just his body finally betrayed him like right. yours eventually mm -hmm. did, but his just came all apart. Right. And so it's a glaring need to have an outside linebacker. But I think Jerry's thinking more hand and dirt, more Von Miller-esque, where right. you're listed as a linebacker who rushes the passer. Right. Right? Didn't mm -hmm. they list Von as a linebacker? Yeah, that's what he was. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So if if you got that going on, and, and he he was mostly blitzing, obviously. It used to be called red dogging. Right. It was just the linebacker. Mm -hmm. But but his splash plays, his flash plays, mm -hmm. were all blitz-type plays right. where he came off the weak side and just terrified, you know, you know, he terrorized. Well, Skip, why don't you use him like they do Devin White? Devin White's a he, Matt, he Mike does. backer, a, and he blitzes but, but more he, than any he, Mike backer. He's inside. Yes. But, again, you, you can go Will, Mike. Yeah, yeah, play you, him you at Will, go, I'll play him at Willie. Yeah. I, I mean, but, look, I, I think – that might take Keanu Neal off the field. Well, it does. I, <laughs> so, and, again, that's why they, they got him. They're going to transition him to the weak side yeah. backer because he's had an Achilles and an ACL. ACL right. So he can't run the way he did when he was the 17th overall pick. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, so here's the problem with this. I hope you're right about Micah Parsons, and I'm not I, – I certainly don't hate this pick, especially if he's – listen – he will step on the field next year and be the best player on my defense. Yeah. As soon as he steps on the field, mm -hmm. and I, I like Demarcus Lawrence, but he just not has he hasn't lived up to twenty million a year. Correct. And I believe this kid has more explosive athletic ability than Demarcus Lawrence right. does. And obviously, Jalen Smith had his little flash for a while and right. made the Pro Bowl, and Wolf Hunter made the Pro Bowl. Two, we're going back three years ago, right. and then what? Well, both of them have had injury Injuries. problems, or they. They just have faded. Wait, if I'm them, I plug him in. Hey, he gonna be our Bobby Wagner. Okay, in this defense, let him be Bobby okay. Wagner. Let him just run to the football. Let him go hunt. Okay, all right. Well, that's fine with me. Right now, listed on their depth chart as the starting cornerback is C.J. Goodwin. Guess where he went to school? The University of California in Pennsylvania. I didn't even know there was a University of <laughs> California either. in Pennsylvania, but that's where he played football and was obviously undrafted, and it was he's been in seven years. He played for Dan Quinn for a little while in Atlanta. He's bounced around the league, and yet he's listed right now as my starting cornerback. So now what do you do? Well, to your point, maybe there's somebody down the line, second, third round, but listen, as, as I, I got personal issues with Richard Sherman, but I'd take him just because he played for Dan Quinn, right. and I still no, think he's defense. got some football. Yeah left. Mm -hmm. So he's still sitting out there. My my man Casey Hayward from Vanderbilt University was once drafted in the second round by Mike McCarthy Northeast. in Green Bay. Right. And remember, he went to the Chargers. And, and, and was and, all pro at one time. At, at one point, he, in then, one year, pro football focus ranked him the number one cornerback, mm -hmm. but that was four years ago. Right. Okay. Well, he's still sitting out there. And that Brashad Breland, who started all year for the Chiefs last year, he's still sitting out mm -hmm. there. Well, is there a quote-unquote cheap buy here that you could plug in and get through a year with at the other corner? Because, you know, we re-signed Jordan Lewis, but he's the slot corner. Right. So, I, I don't know. There's still a glaring hole at cornerback. There is a glaring hole, Skip, but this guy was too good to pass up. You, okay, you can't, you I can't got pass it. Him up. I got it. And and I hope you're right. You, you just... You just let him play football, but is he going to play within the scheme? No, he will not play within the scheme. Is he going to be cerebral like Sean Lee was? No. No. Because Sean Lee played more with his head than his body. Right. This kid is a sensational yeah. – he, he's a freakish, big, strong, fast athlete. Yep. Freakish. Yep.
Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.